the the last time probably that we were um, talking, it was just right before your participation um, to the Bosnia Herzegovina Pavilion in Venice in Venice Biennial in 2013. And so I would like to know what would you change retrospectively um, in this pavilion, and finally, if if you succeed in making the portrait of your country as you used to do as Thompson engraver and probably if you can explain a bit uh, your um, story as a Thompson engraver uh, and how this is related to the concept of the pavilion. Well, by changing, I don't think so. I think that only maybe circumstances are changed now, two years after. So, if I will go back in those circumstances uh, of 2012, actually, uh, I will, actually not 12, 13, 12, 13, because of the preparation, I will not change anything. Because the, the uh, pavilion was, uh, um, for a first, there are two importance of that pavilion at that moment. First was political one because the representation of Bosnia at Venice Biennale was mostly a result of first political uh, agreement on the level of culture that country will be represented. Uh, even the appearance of the, and the structure of Biennale itself is very problematic, representing uh, nations, actually representing the culture in the framework of, of nations which that culture are becoming national or nationalistic culture. Uh, so that's the, the one thing. But the other thing, the, except this political one, was the importance that Bosnia didn't appear 10 years. So this first appearance was uh, something as a good startup. Now, as we, as I can see now, Bosnia will not be at the Venice Biennale this time. So we see that actually uh, we predicted somehow that more important will be to have this continuum after this first time more than that what is presented at the, mm -hmm. this Biennale. As, a, uh, as a Goran Trbuljak, one Croatian artist, uh, older generation, says the fact that someone is given opportunity to have exhibition is more important than exhibition and what is exhibited on that exhibition itself. So in this case was the same. Uh, actually, the opportunity to present and being Bosnia on the Biennale was more important than content of the pavilion itself. But uh, as we, your question was posed also about the content of the Biennale, which was uh, based on my personal experience of uh, uh, making the portraits, uh, hyperreal portraits on the tombstones. Uh, the content of exhibition was actually trying to break this prejudge made it about uh, pathetical Bosnian identity. Like, okay, now you make interview with me uh, from a European position, calling me from the Rome or Paris, you know, and I'm in a pity poor Bosnia, and then I will tell you about my very poor and pity situation, how this war destroyed us all, and so on and so on. So this kind of approach uh, created through the, all this period after the war, pathetical identity of the society. So I recognize that when I, for the first time, started to travel around the world and I met the other artists, curators, immediately when I said that I'm from Bosnia, they said, oh, poor you, oh my God, you survived, you are so lucky. I said, no, I don't want you to, you know, to, to uh, pity me. You know, I, I finished the faculty, I fight, I didn't get the money in a, uh, childhood, but now I live from my work. I'm teaching as a professor. Please appreciate my knowledge, not that that I'm poor Bosnian artist uh, coming from the world. So uh, the actually this uh, fake identity was very hard to break after those many years of this. Uh, but also from the artist side, um, Bosnian artists were very clever to use this. You can make a formula. You choose very sensitive social problem. On one side, quite pathetical, you know, someone died, there is a poor guy, invalid or something like that. And then you choose contemporary media, 
you choose video, performance, installation, uh, digital photography or something like that. You mix those two things with your biography that you are from Bosnia and there is a success. You know, <laughs> everybody said, oh my God, beautiful work. It's uh, someone is suffering but far away from us. But let's just see how they suffer. So uh, th that's just something as one uh, example. And actually the Garden of the Lights as a title of the pavilion was dislocating this um, idea. But from the other side also, uh, to making a portrait of Bosnian society, very different ones, was focusing of idea of garden as a beauty in differences. And uh, as there is a, in this experience of making a portrait, it's a good curse. What people in the village made as long as I was doing those portraits. The curse in the village was, I hope so, that Mladen will do your portrait. So <laughs> that means that you are dead, you don't exist anymore. So. <laughs> hope so, this is not the case uh, in Bosnia. Okay. And um, I, while you were talking, it came to my mind that you are now professor of art in Banja Luka. Um, uh, university, I mean, uh, Fine Arts Academy, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I would like to to ask you, what are your impressions? What do you think of the of the current art scene in Banja Luka? What do you, how do you do you feel? How do you perceive the new emerging artists there and your students? Uh, is there a good energy? Do you find some tendencies in particular? Actually, by, by the fall of this idea of uh, socialism in many post-socialist countries, also now we are, we are being aware of the fall of the cultural systems also remained and uh, overtaken from the socialism. Uh, here, uh, now in uh, Bosnia, there is a, like a new generation of artists which is overcoming and the, that generation is waited for many years, especially because the system was not adapted very well uh, according to the museum and gallery system and also the educational system on art academies. Most of the academies are very having a very classical approach. So the, also the switch in the education process was needed. And what is the most important, people still or even they didn't understood that the main values in a society, they change it. In socialism, the values were sharing. Also in the culture, the all values produced, even in an economical uh, sense, were shared in between. So this share even of the culture was uh, uh, a priori. Now, today, when we are living in this post-transitional period, because it's not even still neoliberalism or capitalism, because somehow we are in between, in a gap between those two systems, uh, people don't understand that now the main value is not the share of the culture. The main value now is money. So the system and the galleries don't understand that country anymore will not finance them as it was financed before the war. So they didn't use to it now on these new values. And uh, in this space, the artists are having maybe the better position because uh, they are independent more and they uh, are here to actually observe all this process of, uh, of this privatization of the culture as, as it's something like that. And, you know, it also depends to them how they are capable to deal with, it, with that in their own art. But now, uh, for example, on uh, here in Banja Luka on the Academy of Arts, we have very interesting uh, generation of artists uh, who finished it last year. Now they are already working uh, quite uh, regionally and also in the European context. And I need to uh, say that uh, in a few years I expect to have a like, new refreshment, also in a way of thinking about culture in general, not only about producing some nice, beautiful art. That's great. So thank you very much, Mladen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michaela. <laughs>